it's just about a kid who is king of his own neighbourhood and he has this ragtag team of friends and they just get up to all sorts of um, hijinks and Danny is, Danny, as far as he's concerned, he's best at everything. So he's, whatever it is, whether it's, uh, you know, running or racing anybody or playing sport or uh, writing stories or anything really, uh, he's the best. So, uh, but his, his friends know that that's the kind of boy that he is and they forgive him for that <laughs> because he's such good fun. I love writing books where the kids are really proactive, they invent their own world, they entertain themselves and technology is either non-existent or really, really just in the background. And it's not because I've got anything against technology, it's just that I like to have characters who are really rich and really, you know, they have an imagination, they have an inner life. Um, so that's, that's really what's going on with Danny all the time. And I, they're actually not that easy to write, you know, it would be a lot easier if he was just playing video games and <laughs> calling his friends and texting and doing stuff but to actually um, or have if he had you know um, entertainment arranged for him but he doesn't uh, so so he has to come up with stuff and so that's what's really challenging this really really rich imagination it's also about sort of about tolerance because Danny is quite um, He's, he's arrogant, but, but not in an aggressive way. And um, the kids just, they get it. You know, the kids that read it know, know that he's not reliable, um, but also his friends, they all get it too. You know, that Danny, that's just what Danny is. He's, he's a leader, but he makes things happen. That's what Mitch is always saying that she loves about him, is that he makes stuff happen. Mostly they're just my, I just reflect on my own childhood and think about the kids that I knew and what I was like as a kid and what the kids around me were like. Uh, and I'm, I'm very inspired by film. I, I love film and I, if I like a film, I'll watch it over and over and over and over and over again. So I, people say to me a lot that my books are very filmic and I think that's why because they're so, yeah, inspired by film. More so than books. The cheekiest thing. Well, truly Tan is just continually cheeky. <laughs> and you have to kind of know Tan to know that she's an unreliable narrator. So she doesn't always tell the truth. Um, so she'll say, oh yes, I'll do that. And then she'll go and do the complete opposite. Uh, I think with Danny, it's just he's always up to something. And he's always um, trying to, he might be trying to scare someone. You know, he might be spooking someone and dressing up. Um, he might be trying to uh, annoy Bella, his big sister. I love it when I know I've got a great book on the, on the go. It's like this little special treat that's in the back of my mind all day. I know that, you know, at some point today, I'm gonna get to that book and get back into that world. So that's why I love it. Famous Five books were just, uh, I just adored them. And we used to, every time a new one would come out, my girlfriends and I would get together and we'd go to my friend's place and we'd all lay on the bed and just read. She had like three sisters and there was all these beds in the bedroom. <laughs> and we'd just grab a bed each and just lay there and read the latest one. It was just this, it was just a, such a treat. We loved it. So I did just today by Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler, um, which is Lemony Snicket. Uh, but my partner is actually currently reading me Lord of the Rings. So we read to each other. So I don't, I don't think there's any age where you should stop being read to or reading to uh, someone else. So my partner read me The Hobbit last year and we're currently in the first book of um, Lord of the Rings. So we only get to read about six pages a night. So it'll take us about three years to read. <laughs> <laughs> to read the trilogy, but it's good fun. Well, Mitch and I both live in Melbourne, so that's really great. So we actually meet physically, and uh, especially at the start of the series, we met physically and talked about how we wanted all the characters to look. So Mitch bought 
her sensibilities to the story. So I was never married to any look in particular about how the kids looked. I had a vague idea, but then Mitch just sort of came to it and did what she wanted. Uh, for instance, like with May Singh, uh, May always wears a onesie. <laughs> and that was p totally Mitch, you know, she brought that. And we had a discussion about what kind of onesie May, May might wear. And uh, we, we decided that she would just wear a cow onesie all the time. Mitch just brings yeah, all that to it. She just brings a whole other level. Yeah, it's great. I think that um, no book is easy. Every book has its own problems. You, you never you never quite nail it. You, you, uh, but the other thing I think too is to be a little bit more organised. So I'm much more organised now before I start writing than I was when I first began. So I know now to hold back, to, to do a lot of research and hold back from the actual writing until I've really got a, a much clearer picture about the story before I actually start writing. I think voice is really, really important. I think that voice, the voice has to be strong and confident. Uh, it doesn't have to be funny, but it helps if, you, if you've got a sense of humour with kids. And uh, that you can bring a lightheartedness to it, even if you're dealing with um, you know, deep or complex issues. If you can bring a lightheartedness to it, it makes it more pal palatable for kids. Yeah, I think that, I think voice is really, really important. I think it's really just about the timing, you know, and when the right book comes their way, they will enjoy it. I, I don't think there's, there's, there's no kid that can't find a book for them, it's just about the timing. They are completely fun. There's nothing threatening about a Danny Best story. They are genuinely for fun. They are just the joy of friendship and freedom and there's got, they've got lots of illustration and crazy stuff. And it's just a whole world. The book is a whole world, but it's a really accessible and free and easy world. So any kid, any age, boy or girl, can feel really at home in a Danny Best story and a Danny Best book. There's nothing, there's nothing in there that's trying to teach or moralise, they're just pure good fun. <laughs>